So, I have been kind of quiet on this, um, especially because I, you know, have buddies and I know people who are in the industry when it comes to like acting and writing. I know some folks. And when it comes to this writer's thing, because my uh, friend was asking me the other day, like, why uh, people were upset about the Oprah um, rock situation with Honolulu and stuff. And I was talking to him about it and I was telling him, you know, where people had the issue because he thought they were asking their friends and rich friends. I was like, no, they were asking people. And I'm like, just like me and you, we're struggling and they're asking us to donate money like they don't have the money to do it themselves. And there's a lot of little things with that. And then it opens up, you know, things I told him also too. A lot of people are kind of tired of the, um, of what's going on with the strikes and stuff. So here's where I'm now to the point with the, specifically with the more with the writer's guild that I'm like, no, I'm starting to actually feel a certain type of way towards you. So one of my first issues is, is the fact that because I'm, you know, I have a few hundred people on my channel, um, that subscribe, but I review movies, TV shows, like, uh, you know, right now I got, like I said, a lot going on, but I'm trying to keep up. Uh, I do want to review Superman, my adventures with Superman now that I've watched it. But because of this, they're like, you not, that means I don't support them. And that means that I'll never be allowed to be a part of their writer's guild if I ever want to be a writer or something for them. Well, I'm having some issues because I was like, okay, that's um, annoying because you, what I do does not affect you and you don't pay me um, anything. So why would me and other influencers need to follow your rules if you're not helping us with money and financially and stuff? Then I started getting this thing where I saw a thing happen with Drew Barrymore and then I see a thing with Bill Maher. I see like uh, Real Time is coming back. Unfortunately, Sans writers or writing, it has been five months and it is time to bring people back to work. The writers have important issues that I sympathize with and I hope they are addressed to their satisfaction, but they are not the only people with issues, problems, and concerns. Despite some assistance from me, much of the staff is struggling mightily. We all were hopeful this would come to an end after Labor Day, but that day has come and gone. And there still seems to be nothing happening. I love my writers. I am one of them, but I am not prepared to lose an entire year and see so many below the line people suffer so much. I will honor the spirit of the strike by not doing a monologue, desk piece, new rules or editorial, the written pieces that I am so proud of on real time. And I'll say it up front to the audience. The show I will be doing without my writers will not be as good as our normal show, full stop. But the heart of the show is an off-the-cuff panel discussion that aims to cut through the uh, BS and predictable uh, partisanship. And that will continue. The show will not disappoint. Now, I think that's a good message because one of the big things that's happening is, is that, um, and just to be clear, I used to be more of a fan of Bill Maher until he pulled the uh, the, the N word thing, which I kind of understood was a little bit of a slip, but still it was a little off. And then he did the thing with Stan Lee, and after that, I was done because he and I and I didn't always agree with him, but I thought his show was interesting to have people like come from both sides. But he just started getting rubbing me the wrong way, and I'm in agreement with him. The, these strikes are not just affecting the writers. They're not just affecting the actors. They're affecting the construction workers, the donut people. Uh, I know someone who recently, uh, he does some production stuff. He got laid off. Um, what I work in, uh, with mortgages and stuff like that, like, people are hurting. And the reason why I have a big issue with the writers is, and I don't know if you know this, and like I said, normally I didn't want to talk about it, but I am. The writers got 90 to 95% of everything they wanted. The AI thing, which I'm 100% in agree with, and I was actually agreeing with them. They should be paid more, even though they were already making eight to $9,000 a week, and even in LA, that's pretty good. But no, they were like, we're not making a living wage. Okay, get your money. And then they got offered eleven to $14,000 a week. They got 
like I said, the thing at the AI where AI can't just replace them. And that's why part of the actors are, are fighting for the same thing. AI should be a tool, not a replacement. They're doing all of this stuff. They got everything they wanted. The only thing that the writers weren't allowed to get was to have a mandate of how many people need to be in the writer room. And that I agree with. First off, if you're going to do these things, budget cuts, things like that happen to make the compromises, some people will lose their jobs. Also, if you've, if you've been paying attention to a lot of things you've watched recently, have you noticed outside of network TV and if you, the CW was big for this, you don't really get shows that are 22 to 25 episodes anymore. You're getting shows that are like 10, 13, I think, Le, like, for example, La Brea, or La Brea, like uh, that, I think the first season was 13 episodes, the second season was 16, From is like 13 episodes, um, One Piece was like eight, like, the shows aren't as many, so why would you need as many writers? That's the first problem. The second problem I'm having is, is that most of the stuff you guys are writing is garbage. And people can sit there and go, no, it's not. Mm, there's a look how many movies are failing look how many tv shows are only getting one season like october faction which was just ah and v wars which i i couldn't even get through past the second episode it was just boring and there's writers who have openly admitted that they are working out their issues in the writing room and they're self-inserting characters and oc characters and they're taking things that used to exist before them and then they're changing them and air quote modernizing them and then turning around and telling people well you're just the stuff out because you don't like what we've done even though that was not the character and it's funny under bill mars thing the first thing i see is scab i've watched this show for the last time and people are like scab darn the panel was my least favorite part only yeah whatever and people are like it definitely undermines the strike and now Here's what's interesting. So when someone put that on here, somebody immediately goes, the strike is undermining the rest of the workers, starving them. There are people. And it's also interesting because why is it that Bill Maher and Drew Barrymore are catching the heat, but the view's been on and people are talking about how they're going to picket Drew Barrymore show. That's weird. Why aren't you picketing the other shows? Uh, someone else put, this is true. Local 479 over here, special effects department we have over 200,000 members in our union and we are all out of work. We do not have a strike fund. We aren't getting help. We are all out of work please, because of this strike. Unpopular opinion, but if the show's employers can navigate a strike to successfully put as many people back to work as possible, then it should. This decision will help put food on the table for those who aren't writers, but still impacted by their decision to strike. Everyone who's calling him a scab, you don't know what that means. You're, and, and I'm seeing writers and stuff like that. Here, I, I got it up on my tablet, so check it out. See, Bill Maher saying all that. First comment, scab. And people are, are, are just like, what are you talking about? I'm like, how is it a scab when you're putting people out of work and you decided and I heard that showrunners got pissed off and people are now hanging up on each other and stuff and they're going um to the networks uh someone even like like it's it's just not right like you literally turned down and this is where my straw comes to you turned down 11 to 14 thousand dollars a week you turned down the AI thing and all this stuff because you want a hundred percent and what really also grinded my gears is, is that I know someone that went out to California. Um, they went, I think it was like to Universal. And they said that while they were there, WGA people were like handing them out um, flyers and going, you need to support us. And and they're asking them for money. And I'm like, what? So No. First off, the parks have nothing to do with that. Secondly, you're already making eight to $9,000 a week in LA with your, dude, that's not enough money. The park workers are making like $20 a week <laughs> or, you know, you know what I mean? Like $20 an hour. Um, but it probably will be the equivalent of $20 a week because they can barely afford anything. And you're sitting there saying stuff like, oh, well, people need a living wage. And what you were making wasn't a living wage. And on top of that, you're writing a lot of stuff that are just, this is terrible. I think if you are a good writer, if you ever show like what's going on with One Piece, 
You deserve a raise. You deserve all the stuff. If you want to get like that, let's get like that. Your work, just like everyone else in the world, your work should reflect. If you're doing good job, you get raises. You're doing bad job, you get let go. And the fact that you're they're turning around and they're telling other people you need to support them while they're looking at the eyes of their kids, their wife, their pet, or anything going, I'm about to lose the roof over my head for something that is not even in that's going to benefit me, even if they get what they want. It, it's it's just nuts. And people are even saying it. People forget these strikes aren't just affecting the writers and actors. It's affecting the lighting, craft services, production assistants, editors, grips, set dressers, post-production, and more. They are well aware writers and actors don't think twice about them. And look at this. They say that. And what does this person say here? I didn't even think about this. And that's the truth. All the other late night hosts are supporting their other employees and coming up with ways to further fund them as they support their writers and their cause. Mirror saying nah to that and is going back to beloved Mirror. Sea Strike for Five, for example. So other late night hosts are personally paying their uh, paychecks without a penny different from their original pay. What do you mean by support? Yeah. See? So there are people out here that are like, no. And what's happening is, is that it's really putting the WGA, especially in a dark light. Like, I know Stephen Amell and um, Zachary Levi were upset because they were like, why can't we talk about our shows or our movies that are upcoming when people paid their hard-earned money to see us talk about our shows and our movies and things like that. So I get that, but I understand, like, but they're respecting the thing at the same time. They just think it's not a great idea, which you are allowed to have an opposing opinion. But when it comes to the writers, I would love to hear what y'all all think, because I think that the, between them demanding influencers like myself, who they don't pay me a dime to do certain things a certain way or I will never be allowed to join them if I ever wanted to have aspirations of like writing a script or something or the fact that they're they're letting some people like the actors think how some of them are allowed to act like AMC with Walking Dead is starting to because they're not part of things so it's like wait a minute why are some of them allowed to others aren't like these things this isn't like a unified front and honestly from what people are pointing out the unions are actually costing people more money to live so, and I, I mean, I'm not a part of a union, I don't know, but I have seen people mention that, that it's actually costing them more because the real reason why they want as many actors or writers as possible in the writer's room is because they can get more dues. And that's what it's coming down to. So honestly, all to me, the WGA is doing right now is showing that they're just as greedy as the studios. Because if you are in a negotiation, and I'll give you a quick example before I go. Let's say... You say you want pencils, pens, you want a $10 raise, and you you want brooms, and you also want to have 50 people in the room. I go, I'll give you the brooms, the pens, the, the, the whole nine. But we can't have 50 people in the room because for your job, we only need 20. Or to 25. So we, we can do about half. Actually, they go back and they go, you know what? We could do 30. We could do a little more than half. And you say no to that, but I just gave you everything else you wanted. You're being greedy. Whenever you do something like this, a negotiation, especially when it's a restructuring of a business, there are people who are going to be out of work because they have to restructure the business. And the fact that these guys got not, pretty much 90 to 95% of what they wanted and the only thing they couldn't do was demand how many people are in the writer's room, which, like I said, if you look at a lot of shows you watch now, they're not doing the old school sitcom 20-something episodes a season. A lot of them now are doing like 8, 16, 13, 10. Uh, look at the Marvel shows. What, Secret Evasion was what, like six episodes? Like, they're not 
doing shows like they used to. So I would love to hear what you say. I think it's uh, ridiculous, and I'm seeing why people are turning on the actors and especially the writers because I think that's what's going on. I was in agreement with the writers too, not even picking sides, until they pulled that. Most people don't even make 14000 in three months. I don't. Ah, heck, I don't make 11000 in three months. As most people, the rest of the country. So, I would love to hear what you have to say. But the fact that I'm hearing they're going to picket Drew Barrymore, and but they're not going to picket The View and these other shows, what's the difference? I see hypocrisy, and I'm really honestly thinking they're just being greedy now. And they're just being... Rich people uh, eating the rich. And even though there's people that are there, the fact you're calling someone a scab for getting their workers back to work so that they can feed their families and keep a roof over their head, that to me tells me just the type of person you are. And you're only thinking about yourself. Geek Protagonist, you stay safe, you stay healthy, you stay real. Love to hear your comments. See ya.